Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and from unboxings.com and here courtesy of the guys over at kingofgadgets.co.uk I have the HTC Gratia. Uh, as well as handsets, it's actually gone kind of unnoticed. It was released towards the latter part of last year um, and it's sort of one of those ones that's been really overlooked. It was released fairly quietly um, around October, November last year. Um, not too many people have seen it and uh, well actually it's not on sale in very many places at all so uh, I'm going to do a quick unboxing. There's the handset itself. We're going to come back to that in just a second. Then the battery, which is pretty small, and if we have a we've got a list of capacity on here somewhere, is a 1200 milliamp hour battery. So although it's physically small, capacity is pretty good. Then underneath, we have the quick start guide, safety regulatory information, the contact us in case of an issue. So there's all the phone numbers for HTC uh, worldwide. The uh, warranty statement. Pretty lengthy. And then we have the accessories. So we have uh, a white charger to go with the white handset, and so that goes together like so. USB style charger with UK 3 pin plug comes apart in order to fit neatly in the box. We have a USB sync charge cable, so it's a standard USB to micro USB sync and charge. Then a headset, it's a wired headset with four pole three and a half mil jack on the one end. Which is pretty much the standard. I don't think there's too many handsets that don't have that these days. The inline microphone with push button, with, uh, so it's got a push button for play and pause when you're actually using media and skipping backwards and forwards between your tracks. And then the centre button actually uh, is an answer and hang up button when you're in call. Uh, headphones themselves, uh, they're okay, not not the best, but uh, you know, they'll they'll do the job, and they're pretty much well. Again, we've seen these uh, this actual headset. Uh, on countless other HTC products, it's okay. Uh, last thing really, oh, we've got uh, clip and uh, foam covers for the headphones. And last of all in the bottom we have uh, a thing to do with the accessories that we can have for the various handsets from HTC. So let's move all this out of the way and take a quick look at the handset. First of all you're gonna, you would definitely be forgiven for thinking this is an uh, uh, HD Mini because it's practically identical in terms of physical form factor um, and specification uh, even down to the neat little funky screws on the back and the design um, in actual fact very much a fan of the uh, HD Mini in terms of its design and styling so it does just look like a, a white HD Mini it isn't though, this is the Gratia uh, so on top, right at the very top we have the power button and on just the back edge we have the 3.5mm headphone connector so we can use a uh, wired headset or the headphones or uh, you know, our own headphones on the front there is a half VJ display so it's a 320 by 480 pixels which is not bad it's a 3.2 inch capacitive touchscreen underneath we have the home menu back and search buttons and then we have this optical track paddy thing in the middle with a push button uh, which is uh, as you see this kind of a it's completely flat really actually but that is an optical. We've seen this on a couple of other handsets, including the HTC Desire. On the left-hand side, we have up and down volume control, uh, which is quite neat. It's even got little uh, indications there to say up and down. On the bottom, the uh, three, the micro USB sync charge connector, a uh, hole on one side which is for the microphone, and the other one is for a lanyard or phone charm. On the right-hand side, there's absolutely nothing to see. There's no camera button or anything like that, which is a bit of a shame. HTC um, don't tend to put the camera buttons on there. They've uh, only got a couple of handsets with the camera button. But it's a bit of, I think that's a bit of a pity. And we're back to the top, which we've already seen. On the back, we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera. No flash, though. But we do have, uh, next to that, a fairly large loudspeaker grill, as you can see. And if we can pop the back off, which comes off this way. It's kind of difficult to do because, as you can probably make out from the uh, from there, uh, the whole of the back comes off. So actually, it's kind of tricky to get off because you have to pull it out. So let's have a go. Kind of nothing to get hold of, and there we go. So I say the white part goes all around the whole of the handset, which makes it kind of difficult to pull the back cover off. Um, I guess you kind of get used to it if you were doing a lot of um, you know, memory card swapping or SIM card swapping. Um, so in the back, obviously you have the cavity for the battery, so we'll put the battery in place. 
Then we have space for the SIM card and for the micro micro SD HC memory card. Uh, comes this one comes with a two gig memory card, uh, but it will support up to thirty two gig memory cards. Let's put the back cover back on, and as you can see there, that's why it makes it a little bit more difficult to get on. So let's just power up. While it's powering up, run down specification, quad band for GSM and dual band for HSDPA. It'll work most places if you take it abroad. Uh, in terms of size, it's 104, just under 104 millimeters from top to bottom, uh, just under 58 millimeters wide at 57.7, and 11.7 11 millimeters thick. 115 grams, it's heavier than um, maybe its size would suggest, but it feels reassuringly uh, weighty. It's not, it's not heavy by any means at 115 grams, it just uh, is more dense than you would expect it to be, but the design um, means it kind of lends itself to being sort of uh, you know, fairly easy to hold. I'd say 320 by 480 pixel display, uh, which is capacitive touchscreen. Uh, just waiting for that to start up, there we go. Uh, in terms of spe rest spec, 600 megahertz processor, and uh, 512 meg of ROM and 384 meg of RAM. Built-in GPS and uh, Bluetooth supporting um, A2DP and uh, uh, EDR, EDR support. Uh, there's also a built-in FM radio with RDS, say so 5 megapixel camera, and uh, Wi-Fi supports 802.11b and G standards. Uh, there is also the Wi-Fi hotspot mode. Um, it covers sort of like the main parts of the specification. Oh, it's uh, Android 2.2 Froyo. Um, as I say, it's been around for a while. The HD Mini, incidentally, was Windows Mobile. It was probably the last of the Windows Mobile phones, I think, actually, that HTC produced was the uh, HD Mini. Um, and I think at the time we actually looked at the HD Mini, we did like it, but we thought um, it would have actually been better with uh, Android. And indeed, that's what HTC have delivered with the uh, Guardia. So let's take a look. So there's the familiar swipe down to unlock. Um, and then there's a sense user interface that uh, uh, you either kind of love or hate. I'm very, uh, I very much like it, um, but it's very familiar. So we have the time at the top, location which hasn't picked up yet, obviously because uh, just turned on and uh, haven't enabled the uh, uh, location services. We have messages, mail, internet, and camera. Push button at the bottom. We actually see all the apps. The phone. So we have the phone dialer, which is quite nice. Capacitive touchscreen, this is a, as you would expect, very sensitive, so it works quite well. Button on the side allows us to add, add widgets and things to the home but home screen. And we can swipe across, We've got favourites, news, a blank one, and that takes us all the way across. And you'll notice that the little line at the bottom there, as that moves across, tells us where we are. So if we start in the middle, come back the other way, we've got mail, uh, HTC, I think this is uh, messages, weather. Uh, that takes us all the way across. Uh, I can push the home button again to take us to the middle and push it once again. We get the leap view or the overview um, of everything that's running. So we've got the seven panels there uh, showing us uh, what widgets we have on each of those panels. If I go to the blank one, I can either do a long press here to get uh, in to add additional widgets, which will include things like uh, Facebook widget and friend stream, footprints, that sort, of, that sort of stuff. Quite a lot of widgets there. Uh, alternatively, if I don't want to do the long press, I can just push the add button at the side. A menu button brings up menu at the bottom, so we can go to settings, wireless and networks, and let's turn on Wi-Fi. And let's go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi network. So we have a fairly st well, a standard-ish Android QWERTY keyboard. HTC have their own slight spin on this, but uh, to all intents and purposes, it's pretty straightforward and standard. Rotate this way. Uh, no, no accelerometer control. Certainly not in the settings menu there. Okay, well, we'll just put in the key and we'll try that elsewhere. Okay, we're connecting up. Take an IP address. And there we are, we are connected. So let's go back home. There's some notifications here at the top. So uh, first of all, we have uh, well, there's actually a, a notification in the corner. Uh, this next one is Wi-Fi. This one tells me that there's no SIM card installed, no signal, low battery, and obviously the time. Time has just refreshed. Pulled out at the top, and it's asking me that little indicator in the corner, that warning in the corner, is uh, telling me to set the current time. We'll clear that. The current time is actually correct. Um, temperature and uh, well, an approximate location. Uh, in terms of what else we have installed, 
let's go into the application, so full list of apps. Um, it's much as we saw on maybe say the HD Legend or Desire of last year. So we've got a Facebook app, uh, Gmail, Friendstream, the internet, Maps, Navigation, Quick Office, Peep, uh, Wi-Fi Hotspot and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's pop first of all into the internet and take a quick look at the browser and see how that performs uh, on display. See it has picked up the fact that we've rotated so let's uh, not go to htc.com right now, let's go to our site. The keyboard is kind of small. The screen is fairly small as well because it's a compact handset which for somebody with fingers of my size might take a little bit of practice. It's not tiny but uh, it's just making me think a little bit more carefully what I'm doing. There we go, it's loading pretty quickly. Obviously I'm using Wi-Fi and broadband so we would expect it to load quickly but indeed it's working quite, quite well. The page is rendered rather rapidly and laid out quite well. Um, we wouldn't be able to read the small text of the articles at this resolution uh, and with this screen size. Obviously we can double tap to zoom in on the article, text reflows uh, and that works really really rather well so we can actually go through uh, and read our articles that way. Uh, double tap to zoom back out. Also we can use two finger zooming so pinch and pull to actually zoom in and out and if I go around this way as well Oops, I'm going to push the back button. But uh, you get the idea, we can zoom in and out as well. And we got our rotating between orientations with the accelerometer. Uh, it's pretty quick to actually switch between two. So that's pretty cool. Uh, in terms of what else we have here, uh, we've got Gmail, we've got uh, Google Maps, let's see if Google Maps, let's see if we've got a GPS signal, I'm indoors, but uh, let's see if we pick up these GPS satellites will help, so we go accuracy of 60 meters and uh, we can zoom in and out on here as well and we can add different layers obviously and we can turn on satellite for example so there we go, we've got the satellite view uh, it's a standard implementation obviously of um, Google Maps but it works well. It's uh, interesting to see how quickly, in actual fact, it has picked up a proper GPS signal, though. That's very good. Um, so let's go back home. And let's take a look at YouTube. Let's see how quickly the client works there. So this is the older version of the YouTube client. It hasn't updated because we haven't signed into our drug market. So if we go and check out Leo D, L E O D W E, which is my. Uh, YouTube alias, if you like, Monica. And in terms of what we have on here, all of our videos, uh, there are, well, 512 videos that we now have. So let's just pick on anyone. HTC Desire S, there we go, that seems appropriate. Load the movie. And it's buffering. Buffered pretty quickly. Again, I am using a broadband connection, so you'd expect it to come down pretty quickly. But in terms of the processing the handset's doing, it's working rather well. It's uh, picked up and started playing rather rapidly. If I switch around this way, oops. No, oh, I pushed home by mistake. Oh well. Um, but yeah, that worked, played rather quickly. I will just sign into Android Market and see if we've got any updates on there that it's going to pick up. So we'll sign in. It's a username. And do we have. We don't, no, we do have XR on control, there we go. So there's our landscape version of the keyboard, which is much larger and obviously easier to use. There we go, and we'll just sign into that Google account, which should take a second or so. There we go, finish set up, set the terms and conditions, and there we go, into Android Market. Obviously, taking a while to load. There we go. If we pop into downloads, it'll tell us the things that uh, we've already paid for showing in there. And uh, actually, within a moment or two, 
we would expect to see it offering uh, updates uh, for various apps uh, in there as well so uh, we'll wait for that to happen while we go back home and in terms of having gone into there it should actually pick up our Gmail well it's still synchronizing, we've got a little synchronize icon on the top there so we'll synchronize our Gmail and bring that down because obviously they are linked and I'll be back so soon some more videos and reviews on KCMA.co.uk but for now, um, thanks for watching